Spirit, does it stay? Does it go? The fact is, spirit does survive death. Our loved ones are all around us. Love survives. Spirit survives. All is not lost. Welcome to the All is Not Lost podcast. Here's your host, psychic and evidential medium, Rianne Maldonado. I don't know if you're anything like me, but every once in a while, I will stop to look back at, well, let me start over. Every now and then I will look at where I am right now or a situation I'm in, and I will stop to look back and think, how did I get here? And not in a bad way, but more like in a fun way, like what are all the things I did in my life or choices I made or steps I took or places I lived that got me where I am today or introduced me to the person that I'm, you know, happy to be knowing this day. And I think it's actually kind of a fun journey sometimes to think, oh, if I hadn't done this or I hadn't have met that person or lived in that neighborhood, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I don't know if that's just something I do or if other people do it, but, but I do think it's kind of a fun thing to reflect on. And I'm going to talk a lot about this and why it matters in today's episode, but that wouldn't be that. Well, there's more to it than just these steps that got us where we are today. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit. And you might be thinking, oh, like manifestation. And, and you would be right in that I'm going to talk about manifestation a little bit, but I'm not going to talk about manifestation as if, you know, describing what it is, why you want to do it, how to do it and all of that. This is definitely not an episode about, about that more about how we get signs and nudges from the universe or God, the divine angels, spirit guides, whatever it is you're comfortable calling it or whatever combination of those things you, you believe in, but how those little nudges and signs push us along our life's path. But while we're on the topic of signs, I think it's really important to, to differentiate and talk about signs from our loved ones in spirit, especially from a mediumistic perspective. So I'm going to do a little bit about both here because I do think that they intertwine. But I'm going to start today's episode talking specifically about our signs from loved ones in spirit. I think this is really important for so many reasons. Um, when we think about losing a loved one and how much we miss them, you know, we might know that their death was probably at that time the best possible thing for them in some cases if somebody has been suffering a terrible illness that's been dragging on a long time, of course you want them to be at peace and out of pain and all of these things. But let's be real. Our heart hurts. We miss them. We miss their physical presence and having conversations with them and sharing our excitements or our sorrows with them. It's a real loss when we lose somebody that we love to the other side. And I'm here to tell you that they're not really lost and that you still can communicate with them. It's just going to be through a different language. When you have a loved one on the other side in spirit, they want to be heard. They want to be acknowledged. They are trying to get your attention all the time, whether it's a pet or, or a person, um, they are trying to get attention from you all the time. We don't hear it because we live these busy lives. We're constantly keeping our minds occupied, our bodies occupied, whether we're on our cell phones or we're, you know, working with our children, doing homework, cooking dinner, working a job, whatever it is we're doing, we're being inundated with information constantly from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed. We're never without information coming in. So when these little tiny subtle very quiet, easily unnoticed signs from spirit come through. We just don't see them or hear them. Um, our attention is elsewhere. So I'd really like to 
help you understand that you didn't lose your loved one. You're just going to have to communicate in a different way, as I said before. And you might have to practice a little bit of peace and quiet. I know I'm a mom of five. I work, I have kids. There's no quiet in my life, but we have to create some quiet or even moments um, so that we can hear these signs from our loved ones in spirit. So I'm going to give a few examples. If you're if you're walking somewhere or you're sitting in your room or, you know, somewhere where it wouldn't make any sense. And all of a sudden you smell cigar smoke or pipe smoke, and there's nobody around you smoking a cigar or definitely not smoking a pipe. But all of a sudden the image of your grandfather pops in your mind. When you smell this, I'm here to tell you that that's your grandfather. He's sending you a sign. He's saying, I'm here. I'm with you. Remember me. Don't be afraid. I'm right here with you. This, you know, whether it's cigar smoke or your grandmother's perfume or the smell of roses because your grandmother had a rose garden, or let's say the smell of roses and your mother's name was Rose. These are the signs, but they're that subtle. They, they just come through just in a, just a spark really quickly, subtly, and it could be missed very easily. A lot of people find coins and the song, you know, pennies from heaven. People find pennies in random spaces. You know, you might empty out a sock drawer or whatever, and there's a couple of pennies in the bottom. Or I, I actually have a friend who she knows her grandmother's communicating with her when she finds dimes and she finds dimes in the strangest places. One time, I think she mentioned she found one in her dryer, one time in her shoe just there's a dime. And so she always knows that when she finds a dime in a random place, she stops, takes a breath and acknowledges her grandmother and thanks her for being there or sends her some love, whatever it is she needs at that moment. Or if she's struggling at that moment and finds a dime, she can take a moment to know that her grandmother's there supporting her through that difficult moment. These, these things matter and they're, they're very real. If you are on the lookout for them, other people say they find, you know, a white feather just randomly in a room where there would be no birds, um, you know, white feather in your bed or, you know, on your couch. Okay. Of course you could be thinking, well, what if it's a down pillow on the bed? Sure. But work with me here. A beautiful, perfectly formed white feather, just laying in the middle of the floor where it wouldn't have any reason to be there. Definitely is considered a sign from spirit. So if you're thinking of someone you love right then and you find the white feather, well, there you go. That's confirmation that your loved one is with you. These are important. One of my favorites though is songs. I love music. And there are times when I'm just wrapped up in the actual music. And then there are other times that I'm so focused on the lyrics and I don't know why, or I don't realize that I am. And then I will hear something and I'll go, oh my gosh, that's why I was supposed to be listening to this. That is a sign. That's a message. I'll give you an example of this one. So I love the band, The Killers. I recently saw them in concert. I'm going to be seeing them again in March. I can't wait. One of my all-time favorite bands. Every song seems to speak to me. Well, almost every, but <laughs> I just, I just love them. I have listened to my favorite songs of theirs over and over and over four bajillion times. And, you know, I get out of it what I get out of it at the moment. But recently I was driving to California and I had some killer songs on. And one particular song came on that I know is a cover. And I love the song and I hate the original, but I love the cover that the killers did. Well, I can't, I really truly cannot tell you how many times I've listened to the song and the lyrics are kind of hard to understand at some point. So they go pretty fast, but there I am driving down the eight freeway from Arizona to California, just kind of zoning out, listening to the music. And all of a sudden the lyrics were like lighting up as if it was a neon sign in the song four winds when Brandon flowers sings that they're on their way to Casa Dega to commune with the dead. And I almost crashed my car. It's going to sound crazy. 
if you don't understand me and my weirdness with all of this spiritual signs and stuff. But the reason that blew my mind and side note, sometimes we're not ready for signs and they have to come at the right time when we would be ready. And I say that because this is one of those. I had just in September for the very first time ever gone to Lilydale, New York for a mediumship workshop. And Lilydale will be a topic of another episode for sure. I'm actually going to be doing one shortly with an expert on Lilydale. But Lilydale is basically the home of mediumship in the United States from the late 1800s. And it is still going today. It's an amazing, amazing place. Well, here nestled in the lyrics of this song, the writer had written, they're on their way to Casa Dega to commune with the dead. Well, Lilydale is in Casa Dega County or near Casa Dega Lakes. It, it's right in that area. And what do we go to Lilydale for? Ah, to, commune, to commune with the dead. I mean, mediumship. Hello. So right there was this mind blowing sign for me about Lilydale and my love of music all wrapped into one. I, I just had a lot to, to process with that for myself and some things going on in my life and what I was thinking about at the time and my goals with my mediumship and this podcast and everything. And so when I heard that, I just knew that I was on the right track and it was really special to me. So songs are some of my very favorite ways to get signs. You know, you might be in the grocery store or the airport or, you know, somewhere at doctor's office and you're dreading some bad news or something. And a song comes on that reminds you of someone that you love in spirit and brings you comfort. And that's special. These things are really important. Another important one is spirit. Spirit will use our pets. <laughs> so not only do we have pets in spirit, which you may see, sense, or feel around you, which is amazing and special. And I'm here to tell you, don't, don't disregard that. If you see a little shadow of a cat run by out of the corner of your eyes and you're missing your cat in spirit, well, acknowledge your cat, you know, say, hi, I'm glad you're here. You know, the cat's with you. But what I'm also saying is that our pets on the earthly plane that are still here with us today, our pets here, they can sense, even see, I'm guessing spirit. And so if you have a pet who is, you know, staring off into a corner or, you know, looks like they're just looking up at an empty wall, things like that, they're probably seeing your loved one. They're probably seeing somebody that, that you miss right now and you could use a little comfort from. And so pay attention to what your pet is doing. And okay. At the risk of sounding crazy, which I don't really care anymore because, because I believe in what I do and I've had enough proof. Talk to the spirit. My husband, after years and years of being in denial and not wanting to talk about any of this and actually telling me not to talk about it, who is now one of my biggest supporters, um, one night he finally confided in me that he saw a spirit standing at the foot of the bed one night when he woke up. And I said, oh, well, did you ask him why they're here? And he's like, no, how do I do that? I'm like, well, you can say it out loud or you can say it in your head. It's all intention from your heart. You can ask, who are you? Why are you here? What do you need? Usually it's just somebody that wants to visit you because they love you. And I don't know if he was ready to do much with that at the time, but I'm telling you, it's totally okay. You're not crazy. If you sense a spirit around you or your pet is letting you know that someone's around you, ask, you know, even if it's in your mind, like I said, if you're too embarrassed to say it out loud, that's totally fine. It, spirit knows your intention. And if you have the intention of finding out who the person is and why they're here, you might be pleasantly surprised that you get a great message or a loving feeling out of it. Um, there's a technique I learned years ago that I absolutely love, and I, I don't use it as often as I should, but I've used it on airplanes when I'm nervous or other times. If you sense that there's a spirit around you, you and you're trying to figure out who it is, 
I have closed my eyes in the past and said, place something in my hand that will help me know who you are. And obviously you're not going to have a physical object placed in your hand, but mentally you will see something or you will sense it or you will feel what it is. And there was one time I was on an airplane and I was exceptionally nervous. I don't know if we were having turbulence. I don't know what it was. And I felt somebody was around me, but I didn't know who. And I asked, I said, okay, I closed my eyes, took a deep breath. And I said, who's here with me? I would, I would love to know. I would love the comfort, but I I need to know who it is. Please place something in my hand that will make me know who you are. And I immediately saw in my mind's eye, a little glass dolphin, a blue glass dolphin. And I could even feel the coolness in the palm of my hand. And I instantly knew it was my grandma cookie. When I was in fifth grade, I had to do a report on whales and dolphins. I remember this in the old days when you had encyclopedias and no internet and poster boards and glue sticks and all that good stuff. And I went over to my grandma cookies house and she was helping me put together my report with my pictures of dolphins and whales on this poster board. And so I had without a doubt, I knew that grandma cookie was with me on that airplane. And then I was able to communicate with her from my heart and in my mind and know that she was comforting me while I was nervous on this airplane. So that's a technique I like to teach people because it's super valuable. Um, one more on this. I, I was driving one morning with my whole family in the car and it, it was, um, it was chaos, utter chaos <laughs> in the car as usual. And for some reason, I felt again that there was a spirit with me and I burst into tears. The emotion was so overwhelming. I just started to cry and I didn't know why or who was bringing this out. And it, it wasn't sad or bad. It was just like overflowing emotion that had to be released. And I said, who, who are you? Why are you here? What do I need from this? You know, whatever it was I was asking. And I said, please place something in my hand. So I know it's you. And I got a big string of pearls in my hand. That's what I could see in my mind's eye. Now I was driving, my eyes weren't closed, obviously, but I still could see this in my mind's eye. I could sense it, this big string of pearls. And right away, I knew it was my other grandmother who always wore pearls to church. And since then, a friend of mine has given me my own string of pearls because this story was so impactful. It meant so much to me. So that's a technique you can do if you feel that you have someone around you. Another way that spirit communicates with us is through electricity or electronics. They are masters at manipulating the, you know, flickering lights or turning music on or off, things like that. And I had firsthand really great experience with this in a house I lived in, in Temecula, California, gosh, in like 2008 or before that, a little bit before that. Anyway, I've always known that my grandfather, Sam has been around me. I don't know why I just knew, um, I had had some dream visits with him, which I'll talk about in a minute. And I just knew he was with me, kind of felt like he was my protector. And my grandpa, Sam, and my grandma, Eileen, I say they, they raised me um, because my parents worked full time. And so my grandma and grandpa took care of me a lot. And they were huge influ- influences in my life. And I was very close to them. And whether or not it's true, they would tell me I was their favorite. I think so. <laughs> we'll just go with that. But anyway, I knew grandpa Sam was always, always around me. But in this particular house, I felt his presence so strongly. And looking back, I, th- I really believe he was with me because I was in a pretty bad marriage that I didn't need, I had no business being in this marriage and I needed to be out of it. And grandpa was there to protect me. <laughs> and grandpa had a sense of humor and he kind of had a mouth on him and, you know, he didn't mince words or beat around the bush. Well, this is this is hilarious. What else the story I want to share with you, but first I'm going to back up a little bit and say it started small in this house. I remember that I would tidy up the kitchen at night and turn off all the lights and be ready to, you know, head upstairs to bed. 
and just as I put my foot on the stairs, the lights would come on. Full blown, like it was daylight. Every single kitchen light would come on. And no joke, from pitch black to all the lights on, I'd go back down and turn them off. This would happen at least a few times a week. Um, my oven would blink and do weird things even when there was no power outage or anything like that. All of a sudden the clock would just start blinking. Um, and I would say, you know, I, I was a skeptic. I'm still a skeptic. I don't know if many of you know that I'm also a licensed private investigator in the state of Arizona. So I'm very skeptical, even with mediumship, even with all this stuff that I do and I teach, I don't just blindly follow. So of course there could be a malfunction in the oven. Sure. If it was isolated, I would say that that was probably more the issue, but because multiple things happen, not just the lights, not just the oven, sometimes the refrigerator, um, would do strange things. Just all these little things would happen around the house. I never felt in fear that that's one thing I want to point out with that uh, point out to you is I haven't said this on another episode yet. I don't think I don't remember, but I don't, I don't play with the belief in demons and much of the negative energy stuff. I, I really try not to even let that enter my brain. I don't feel like I need protection from the dead. I feel like you need more protection from the living, to be honest. Um, but specifically in this house, I didn't feel fear. And I, and I'm differentiating that because I did talk about in another episode about finding my gift of mediumship that the house I lived in did have a more negative feeling and the things I was experiencing there did not feel good. Do I think it was a demon? No. And I found out later it was just a person who made bad choices. But in this particular situation, when I, I, I just knew it was my grandfather, I wasn't scared. It was more like comedy, like, okay, grandpa, enough. I need to go to bed. Stop messing with the lights. But the funniest part for me was, I'm sure some of you will remember kind of the old days when you could hook up your TV through your stereo speakers. So you could watch TV through, you know, better speakers, obviously. Well, we had a little stereo that had, you know, the CD player, the radio, and then the stereo option to hook up to your TV, you know, like whatever all those parts are. And one night my parents came over to watch a movie with my husband and me, and we hooked it up to the stereo so we could hear it better and enjoy it more. Well, after the movie was over, we turned off the TV, turned off the stereo, said goodbye to my parents and walked them out the, out the front door. And we came back in and we were turning off the kitchen lights and everything. I'm sorry. I'm laughing. It's just, it still blows my mind to this day. Then we start walking up the stairs to go to bed and the radio comes on and not in stereo mode, not in radio mode, but in CD mode. Well, we weren't listening to CDs. We weren't listening to the radio. We were listening to the stereo mode, but the CD player comes on blasting at the highest volume, ACDC's hell's bells. <laughs> and I busted out laughing because when I was little, I remember my grandpa every time he got frustrated because my grandpa had suffered a really major stroke right before I had been right before I was born. And so he had to relearn a lot of things and he spent a lot of time, sadly frustrated. He couldn't do all the things he used to do and he would get frustrated. And I remember as a kid, I'd hear my grandpa kicking around going hell's bells. <laughs> that was just his phrase. He just said it all the time. And so there we were in the dark, walking up the stairs to the bedroom and boom, here comes hell's bells blasting so loud out of our, <laughs> out of our CD player. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, grandpa, I hear you loud and clear. And you know, we dealt with that and whatever. Well, what's funny to me is multiple other things kept happening in this house. Unfortunately, one was kind of sad. My, my cat lost all of his hair. I think he was pretty stressed out, but he ended up being okay. And he had a great home after that. But once the marriage kind of came to a head and we decided to end things and he moved out 
all of the activity stopped, completely stopped. The lights didn't do it anymore. The radio didn't come on anymore. And let me back up and add this. So my grandfather that I'm talking about is my dad's father. And so my dad was really familiar with him. Obviously it's his dad. And my dad is a big non-believer. I think my dad thinks what I do is still crazy. I don't, I don't even know if he believes me. I don't know. It doesn't matter, but he definitely didn't believe me about the lights coming on and off in the kitchen. And my grandfather had been an electrician. So my dad knew a little bit about electricity and things like that. And he would help me fix things around the house. Well, I'm like, dad, you need to come over and watch this. And I know that he came over thinking he was going to fix whatever the problem was. So we demonstrated one night, turned off all the kitchen lights and started to head up the stairs with my dad. And there you go. All the lights came on and I'm like, see dad, And he could find no reason why the lights were doing what they were doing. So I don't know if he remembers that story, but it was a big story in my mind. So taking it back off of me, uh, as I go on with my stories, the point of that is spirits can really manipulate electricity. You know, they can change your clocks. They can burn out light bulbs, turn on the TV, turn off the TV, talk through your smart devices, all kinds of crazy stuff. I've even read recently or heard from somebody recently that their loved one passed away and they got a phone call from their loved one's number. And when they listened or called it back, something like this, all they heard was really beautiful, like angelic music. There was nothing there, but some music. So however, you experience this, don't be surprised if when you start paying attention to your loved ones in spirit, things like this might happen. And my message to you is don't be frightened, communicate, ask, learn, explore what's going on, why they're there, what they need, what they want to share, or just if they're there to comfort you. So signs are huge. Um, another one of my favorites is dream visits. Now you can research dream visits and how they're very different from a normal dream. I'm going to give it to you in a a nutshell. So, you know, most of us dream at night. Those of us who can kind of remember dreaming know that the minute you wake up, you think, oh, I'm going to remember my dream, but you don't, it fades super fast and the details just float away. And often Normal dreams make no sense because our brain is just processing, processing the events of the day or whatever we're worried about. You know, our brain is trying to work through this. So dreams often don't make sense. You know, you're in a weird body or you're married to somebody different or, you know, you running down a hall and you can never get to the end, you know, just super weird stuff that doesn't make any sense. That is not what I'm talking about when I talk about a dream visit. Also in a dr- in a regular dream, if you dream about your loved one, but you're crying or you're sad, um, you don't feel good about it or something bad's happening. That's definitely not a dream visit. That's just, again, your brain processing, just normal old dreams. A dream visit is very different and exceptionally special. Remember in the beginning when I said, we're so busy, we often don't acknowledge or notice the signs from our loved ones. Well, sometimes If they're trying to get through to you and you just don't hear, they will come to you in your dreams and it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. I have experienced two, only two, but they were so beautiful and so real. I'll never forget them. So the difference with the dream visit is that it's always happy when you're visiting with your loved one in spirit in your dreams, you are both happy. There might be tears, but tears of like love and, and and happiness at being together. Your loved one will appear so real, just like they did in life. You might even feel them hugging. You might hug them and really, really feel it in your dream as if it's super real. All of this, you, you, your conversations will make sense. Everything about the dream will make sense. And the, and the key part, when you wake up the next day, you won't forget it. It will be as if you had a visit, a conversation, shared a hug, shared a memory, whatever it was that happened in the dream will be so real 
It's as if you just did it yesterday with a friend and you won't forget any of the details. I had one last year. Whenever I've had mediumship readings for myself, which are very few, I've, this is weird to admit, never really had a professional mediumship reading with a professional medium. The readings I've all had have been with um, students and some have been wonderful. Some have not been so great, but you know, that's okay. It's, you know, people practice and they learn, but, um, but what I've noticed through all of the readings I've received, my grandmother didn't ever come through, or if she came through, it would be a very minor, minor message or role. Usually it was my grandfather coming through, but, but not my grandmother. Well, about a year ago, she visited me in my dreams. And what I, what I believe is that maybe she just, it's a little hard for her to come through in a normal reading setting, or maybe she hasn't found a medium yet that can bring her through fully, or maybe she's shy. I'm not really sure, but she came to me in this dream visit and it's insane how much detail I can remember and how much happiness I woke up. So happy. I woke up feeling like I had just danced with, with my grandmother in life. And I can tell you exactly what she was wearing. She was wearing this long black beaded dress with so much detail and all the beads were black, except some on the chest were like a gold diamond shape and her hair looked beautiful and she was smiling and we were dancing in the driveway of my parents' house. Like how random is that? That's weird. I don't know why we were there, but it doesn't matter. The idea was that we had a conversation. We shared a hug. She looked beautiful and happy and she brought comfort to me and it was mind blowing. So I want you to know that dream visits are super special and super different than a regular dream. And often our loved ones use them to get to us when there's no other way because we're just too busy, too preoccupied to listen. A little bit of a side note here. You can try this if you would like a dream visit from your loved one. Um, I was taught in the past that you can set a date with your loved one to come visit you in your dreams and leading up to the date, you know, you would communicate mentally with them or, you know, out loud or via writing, you could write a note. I want to visit with you on, you know, Sunday night in my sleep. And, and then you would, you could do things like get a photo of them, put it on your nightstand. And every night before you go to bed, look at it and say to them, I'm looking forward to our dream visit on Sunday night and things like this. And you just say that every night for a few nights or a week before you anticipate this dream visit date. And this is something you can try. I don't know if it always works. You know, it may not. Plus your intention has to really be there and you have to really believe. And spirit also has to be in alignment as well. But, but I was taught that and it's worth giving it a try. I don't, I don't really do that. Um, not for any real reason other than probably I just don't think about it. Um, but I know some people that's really special and they, and they like to try to make that happen and moving on down the road, rainbows. A lot of people say that when they're thinking of their loved one in spirit, they look up and there just happens to be a rainbow. And I had this happen one time I was on a camping trip with an old friend and I hate camping. (laughs) I'm just so not a camping person, but I really, really needed to get away to the mountains and we weren't sleeping in tents. We were sleeping in her camper. So I thought I could do this and, and have a good time. And I ended up having a great time, but this particular friend, she had lost a child, uh, when he was very young and she's definitely a non-believer. She does not believe in mediumship at all. I don't know what she thinks about what I do and why I get the information I get. I don't know. I don't really talk with her much anymore. But I remember one of our first days of the trip, she went on a bike ride or something. And I decided to lay a blanket under a pine tree and just soak in the nature and lay there and just listen to the wind and the trees and all the things I don't ever get to listen to because I'm busy constantly. Um, so it was a real treat, but I felt her son in spirit trying to get my attention. I didn't know a lot about him, but I knew his name 
And so when I felt him coming near me, I asked him some questions that would help me um, express to my friend that it was actually her son communicating with me. And so later that day, I decided to approach her gently because not everybody's open to this. And I, I know how she feels. Plus, I know her son's death was a very sensitive topic for her, of course. But I approached her and asked her if she would ever be interested in hearing some information if I received any from her son. And she said she would be. So I decided to tell her what I got, what information he was showing me. and we both looked up and there was a double rainbow. And I think I still have a picture of it on my phone, but to her, it was random and a coincidence, but to me, it was definite validation. And I think it was a thank you from her son in some way that he was able to pass this message on to her. So rainbows are another, another thing you can look for another sign from your loved ones. And this last one I'm going to talk about today sounds silly (laughs) and like it, like it would just smack you upside the head, but sometimes that's how it has to be. Spirit can actually use things like street signs or even billboards or freeway signs to get your attention. You're driving along, mind in your business, lost in your thoughts. Your kids are screaming in the backseat or you're listening to some podcast or whatever it is. And you're just doing your thing. What makes you look up at that exact moment and see a billboard or a freeway sign that says exactly what you needed to hear at that moment? Like take this route or I don't know, some other random word, you know, about gardening, like whatever it is, could be even more meaningful than that. Like get your degree in five months. I don't know. But the point is if it was so, what am I trying to say? If it caught your attention so much versus what you were already doing, just minding your business, like I said, driving along, but boom, I look up and, oh my God, I'm just hitting the head with this sign. Take it. It's there for a reason. Listen, they're working hard to make you notice these things. So honor them by paying attention. So that's a lot, a lot of information about signs from our loved ones in spirit, our deceased loved ones and deceased pets. I know it's a lot. And we could talk about it for days. There's books and books and books and books written on signs. For (laughs) last example on this one, I was returning from um, England in July and I was in the Manchester airport and I wanted to get some new books. And honestly, I was actually looking for fiction because I haven't read fiction. It feels like in 20 years, I read so much nonfiction. I read tons about mediumship. I read tons about spirituality. Um, the self-improvement manifestation, my God, my bookshelves are overflowing with that stuff. And I was telling myself like, Rianne, you just really need to get lost in some nonfiction book, like for real. So I'm, I'm in the bookstore in the Manchester airport and I'm circling around, circling around. And I like to pick up a ton of things when I'm shopping. And then I put 90% back. I'm not a big shopper, but I like to feel like I shopped. So I'm picking up these books that look interesting, but I keep circling back to this one and I kid you not. Oh my God. The name of the book is signs and the cover art was beautiful and subtle and just pretty and kept catching my eye. And you know how most of the books lined up, the spine is out. You kind of have to tweak your neck to read the titles of the books on the spines. Well, this particular book was in the middle of the shelf, but facing forward. The whole entire cover was forward, just staring at me. And I, I, I literally remember saying in my head, Rianne, you do not need another spiritual book. You especially don't need a book about signs. My God, this is the work you do. What could you possibly learn from that book? No. And I kept going and I went around and around and I picked out my books, got a couple of nonfiction books, I don't even remember what else I got. Doesn't matter. But I get up to the checkout and I stack up my books and it's the strangest thing. I I'm, I'm planning to do an episode for you about what, what mediumship feels like for me and how I experience it. 
but I'm going to give you a little taste right now because there I was at the checkout with my stack of books. I already handed the woman my card to pay, but I felt as if there's like a rope pulling me from my left side. Like if you could see me now, I'm, I'm tugging at my left shoulder, pulling me back towards this other book, really, really strongly pulling me towards this book. So much so that I told the checkout lady, I'm like, can you hold on one second? And I ran back and I grabbed the book, threw it down on the, t- on the counter and paid for it. I was like, okay, whatever. I'm supposed to have this book. So anyway, it ended up being one of the best books on signs I've ever read. It was, it was amazing. It's called, let me reach over here and grab it because I have it next to me. Signs, the secret language of the universe by Laura Lynn Jackson. And I couldn't put it down. I got home and I read the whole book in like two days. Um, it was brilliant. And so signs happen like that too. If, if you're being pulled, like physically feeling like you've got to go this direction or make this choice or buy this thing or avoid that thing, you've got to listen because that is still spirit giving you signs. So to wrap up this part about signs from loved ones, the crux of it is if you want more signs from your loved ones in your life, not only do you need to set the intention to be more open and receptive so that you'll notice the signs that are already around you. But you also need to tell spirit, I want signs from you. I'm ready. I'm going to pay attention. I need these. I want to be a part of this. You see, you need to understand that spirit likes to be acknowledged. They're always trying to communicate. They want to communicate. They're in your lives, but it hurts when they're not acknowledged. So if you acknowledge I know you're here. I know you're trying to communicate with me. I know you're sending me signs. I'm going to, from now on, be more open to them. Spirit's rejoicing. And then lastly, one more part of that is you can even create a little secret language with your loved ones. You can, you can express that. Let's use your, your grandmother, for example, grandma, when you're around me, I would like to see dragonflies or, you know, a purple elephant, really whatever it is. Um, I think it was Laura Lynn Jackson in her book talked about, she wanted a sign and she wanted to see an orange. And then she went to an event and there were like 17,000 oranges on a buffet table or some display. (laughs) It was like getting smacked in the head with her sign. So you can ask specifically, um, you know, if I'm on the right track, grandma, show me a purple elephant. Or when I'm feeling low and I need to feel your presence, can you please send me a red rose? Now, the thing is though, you can't expect it to be so literal. Obviously there's not going to be a purple elephant standing in the road, but what if you pass by a window, you're walking down a a shop, a street lined with shops, and you just happen to glance over your shoulder in the window and there's a painting and it happens to have a purple uh, elephant in it there you go. That's your sign. You stop and you say, thank you, grandma. I got it. I saw what you did there. And then you'll get more. The more you put out, the more grateful you are, the more you ask for them, the more you notice them, the more you'll get. So that is one area I really wanted to talk about with signs from spirit, because I think that's super important. And if we live our lives feeling that we've just lost our loved ones and they're just gone into the abyss and we're never going to hear from them again. That's a really sad way to live in my opinion, obviously. Um, when, when we acknowledge and accept the communication from spirit, we can feel more healing, more comfort, more joy, also more hope. We realize through this communication that our loved ones really aren't gone. And, you know, the title of my podcast is this, I'm embodying this idea that they're not lost. When people say I lost my mother, I lost my grandfather. They're not lost. They're around you all the time. And they are just waiting to communicate. They, they, they're just waiting to be acknowledged. So from me to you, I want to help you find more comfort, more peace, more healing, 
in regards to the loss of a loved one. And I say loss lightly. I know we lose them physically and that is a huge feeling, but they're with you and you just got to learn to communicate through a different language. And so that's what I've got for you today in regards to signs from your loved ones in spirit. Thank you so much for joining me again on all is not lost. I just love having you here. I love talking about these things that are valuable and important and bring comfort and healing to our lives or some excitement. (laughs) Who doesn't love a good ghost story? So I love having you here listening and sharing these experiences with me. If you'd like to be a guest on this show, or you have a topic idea for the show, you can find us at all is not lost podcast.com and click on the tab, be a guest. If you're interested in a mediumship reading with me, or you're just curious about what a reading looks like, you can also visit me at rianmaldonado.com. I will put the link of that in the show notes. <clears throat> I, I know my name is hard to spell. Also, if you've enjoyed today's episode or any of our episodes, please be sure to rate and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. This helps me continue to bring you exciting and impactful guests and also provide you with useful content. And as always, thank you so much for listening to All Is Not Lost, and I look forward to seeing you next time.